Just ahead on American Black Journal, young people in Detroit call for hugs instead of bullets for the new year. We'll get details on this annual effort to reduce gunfire in the city. Plus, a program that teaches formerly homeless veterans how to maintain a healthier lifestyle. Don't go away. American Black Journal starts right now. American Black Journal is funded by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, a partner with communities where children come first. How does diversity bring energy to us all? At DTE Energy, we believe that it's the contributions of all that build great communities. As a company, we grow stronger by welcoming the unique perspectives of everyone. As community members, we support our state's broad culture and heritage. From working closely with women and minority-owned suppliers to embracing our local cultures, DTE Energy is powering diversity. The DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of Detroit Public Television. Welcome to American Black Journal, I'm Stephen Henderson. As we approach the new year, a group of young Detroiters is urging residents to celebrate without gunfire. The 13th annual Hugs Not Bullets campaign launched this week. It's a partnership between youth leaders and the Detroit Police Department. The young people are involved in the Youth Initiatives Project at the Neighborhood Service Organization. They're not only focusing on New Year celebrations, but they also want to reduce gun violence throughout 2017. As part of the campaign, the youth leaders will engage students on the importance of conflict resolution and hold workshops to address bullying and gang activity. My first guest serves as program director for the Youth Initiatives Project, Frank McGee. Welcome back to America. Pleasure Black to be here. Journal. Thank yes. you. Good to see you. <laughs> so, uh, hugs, not bullets. I love that. I love that title because uh, you know this is this is really the only city I've lived in where that New Year's gun thing is is really it seems out of control. This is true. Uh, I've lived other places and. There's always scattered reports of that thing here. It's a pretty concentrated problem. And actually, uh, we're seeing it uh, spread across the country in terms of uh, Is that right? the frequency of these events. Uh, uh, New Orleans, some places, some parts of Chicago, even as far away as Los Angeles, is experiencing the same problem. Yeah. And that's why that's we had to raise awareness. Yeah. yeah, we had to raise awareness because uh, we have children living in the neighborhoods, right. and we don't want uh, bullets uh, impacting, uh, in, hitting homes right. or right. going through windows and, and hurting and, young and people. We should be clear. Uh, just because you fire a bullet up in the air and think uh, you're celebrating, it doesn't mean that that bullet won't find uh, somebody or something and do damage. I mean, f shooting a gun in the air is about as dangerous as it is shooting it, uh, at, you know, forward at something or somebody. I have I have a brick bungalow, and on the side of that home, I have uh, two bullet holes lodged in bricks, that right? and that's obviously from from that tradition. Right. Right. Uh, so talk about how uh, your project at uh, NSO uh, is working with these young people. To well, this is great. Um, the Youth Initiatives Project was fo uh, founded by the youth themselves in uh, September of 1999 at the Detroit Public Library, the oh, main really? branch. Yeah. And at, uh, uh, during that time, a group of youth came together uh, demanding uh, better ways to, to have safety for the children themselves. Yeah. They, they felt that they weren't being respected in the community at that time, and it was a citywide effort uh, that was launched by the youth to address that problem. We expected about 100 youth to show up. We had about 250. Wow. And it, it indicated the severity of the problem here, that their voices were not heard. Yeah. Uh, and it, over time, it, this campaign grew uh, uh, when there was a large gun buyback event held in, uh, I think, 2004. And after that, the youth said, let's have a campaign on a yearly basis. And this is a planning committee that represented at that time over 200 kids. Yeah. And now, what we have now is every year uh, in December, we kick off a year long campaign addressing the issue of celebratory gunfire and gun violence. Uh, although now we address the issue of celebratory gunfire because of the holidays, yeah. but gun violence is addressed throughout the year. Right, right. Uh, and the idea is to sort of redirect, right? Uh, you have to. Find other ways for people to express, you know, either celebration in the case of New Year's or hostility in the case of the other, the, the gun violence we see. And the youth do it in a variety of different ways. 
It, it does involve partnerships and resources, but it also involves bringing, uh, bringing opportunity to our community. Uh, recently, uh, as, as, just a little over a month ago, there was a wonderful event held at Cobo Hall, uh, creating opportunities for young African-American males between the ages of 18 and 29 mm -hmm. uh, to, to secure employment. And just over 1,200 was able to show up at Cobo Hall of over 500 getting uh, empl employment opportunities right there. Right there. Right. That's something that doesn't always happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when you talk about employment and its connection to these problems, uh, you know, I think about the neighborhood uh, that NSO is in, the work that uh, that's being done in that in that neighborhood. Boy, you know, uh, jobs really are are the thing that 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 will help move the needle. And training and education is all tied into that as well. Yeah. And so we're advocating for those opportunities as much as we can. Uh, uh, we have a lot of organizations throughout the city that's working hard on that. I know the Neighborhood Service Organization has, a, uh, has another youth program called YouthLink that addresses employment uh, for that population between 18 and 29. It is ex extremely important that that population figures into the equation of success in Detroit. We cannot have two cities, one separate and unequal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the young people that you're working with, what do they tell you about the things that they see or the things that they're worried about, uh, not just in their neighborhood, but in, in their city, in their country? The biggest fear they have is lack of education. That is huge. The training involved with that, uh, the access to, uh, to uh, uh, computers, if you will. Mm -hmm. There is a digital divide that exists, mm -hmm. and it's not a matter of just putting computers in different locations for young people to, to have access to. It's actually learning uh, these opportunities. And, and, uh, and, 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 and we're not even talking about uh, uh, social media. Right. This is something much deeper, being able to use these assets, these resources as tools that will help move them forward. Yeah. Because uh, uh, they're not getting changing. that in the schools. They're not really. getting enough of that. Yeah. They're not getting enough of that. And so that's why we had to pursue that with, with all, with all conviction yeah. that this must be done for our young people. Uh, we, when I speak of our African American males for a reason, because unfortunately they're, just, they're disproportionately they're at the impacted. highest risk. That's sure. right. Yeah. And so we want them to remain in school and not part of the school to prison pipeline. So that's another concern of theirs. Uh, the, 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 the amount of uh, uh, marijuana locations, the buy marijuana, you would think, well, what's the big deal with that? Well, that access leads to some other issues that must be regulated in some way. Right. And so uh, our youth are concerned and they have spoken out. Uh, many of them have uh, come together and put together a petition, about 1,200 of, of them signed a petition uh, promoting equity yeah. in equ education across the board. Yeah, um, the youth who participate in the program obviously get the message. How do you get it to, to other young people who are not part of the, the initiative? And that's my favorite group. <laughs> I love them. They, they, are, they have been, they are not connected. They are unaware of what, what those resources are mm -hmm. simply because it, they, it's not been, either not been brought to them or they've been discouraged and told that this is not for you. Right. We, 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 we knocked that down very well. And it does require vigilance. Uh, we're in the communities, we're in the neighborhoods, we're in the community centers, uh, we're in the churches, reaching out to them. And what's beautiful about this, the youth are talking to their peers. Yeah. That's more effective than anything. Right. And they in turn become the experts for those who are service providers. In order for us to really make an impact with that population, we have to listen to their needs. Yeah, yeah. That one-to-one -one yes. contact between them is the, is, is the key. It's, it's crucial, and it's, a, it's really the secret sauce, yeah. if you will, to our success. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we had a, uh, seven years ago, we had uh, our Hugs Not Bullets campaign, and we had a um, postcard that was, a, it looked like a large sign, but basically was promoting, uh, discouraging uh, celebrating gunfire, mm -hmm. I mean, celebrating New Year's with gunfire. That's all it was. It was uh, designed by the youth themselves. And to support that campaign, as simple as it sounds, all you had to do was sign this postcard. <laughs> we had probably six or 7,000 signatures. Right. But they took that postcard to different locations throughout the city. And for those who were like 21 to, to, to on up, young, young adults, 
they wanted to, they wanted this postcard to go to to clubs, if you will. Right. <laughs> we right. have fun. Right. We had people standing in line to sign that club, wow. sign that postcard. That right? That's how powerful that message is, because they want to be a part of a movement that was much larger than themselves. Yeah. Uh, quickly before we have to go, uh, I, I know funding is a big part of uh, the, the questions about funding are a big part of what what happens at uh, NSO always. There's always a need for more money. We seem to be ending, uh, entering a political era where there may be less, uh, or at least that the fight for funding for, for places like NSO is going to be tougher. Uh, talk about what that looks like from your chair. I think from my chair, uh, we had to educate the, the, fu the uh, funding sources. Uh, we know they're a student in many ways and doing what they do. But uh, the challenge, of course, is, to, is, is, is the advocacy side of it. Uh, because there's so much is happening in our country and we had to educate uh, those who are unaware of what our young people really go through. And the second thing is about the conviction to do this work and how we do it. And so investing in our young people really is really investing in the future of our city. Right, right. Making that point and making sure everybody understands. And one of the great things about what you're doing is it's not just about getting people what they need now, it's about getting them skills and opportunity to get the things they need later. Exactly, in so many ways, education has been cut in different, different, uh, different levels. And, and basically, we are bankrupting, um, uh, socially and ac academically bankrupting our country. Yeah. And we have to turn that around. Yeah. All right, uh, Frank McGee, as always, thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. Good luck on New Year's Eve. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, coming up next on American Black Journal, a program that's making a huge difference in the lives of formerly homeless veterans. But first, here's a look at some important moments in Detroit's black history. I'm Ken Coleman with a look back at African American life in Detroit. This week in 1950, Ralph Bunch earned a Nobel Peace Prize, becoming the first black to do so. In 1961, Please Mr. Postman by the Marvelettes was the nation's top R&B song. And in 1936, author Donald Goins was born. These are significant events this week in Detroit's black history, taken from the book On This Day, African American Life in Detroit. A partnership between Southwest Solutions and the Detroit Medical Center Foundation is changing the lives of a group of formerly homeless veterans. The Healthy Paquette program teaches the veterans how to eat healthier and to stay active. The name comes from Paquette Square, the 150-unit apartment building operated by Southwest Solutions that provides housing and support services for the veterans. Joining me now is the program's instructor, Randy Spencer, who is founder of Dynasty Fit. She's joined by two veterans in the class, Glenda Mann and Michael Parker. Welcome, all of you, to the Black Journal. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, I, you know, we've had uh, segments on the show about homeless veterans before, and I always start by saying that is maybe the saddest phrase I ever uttered. Yeah. The idea that people who have served our country somehow find themselves uh, unable to, to have a home. Absolutely, and that's what makes Paquette Square so amazing is that they are able to take in, you know, homeless veterans, people who are in need and deserve it the most, yeah. and provide them into a space that's amazing. And it's nice housing, and the awesome part about it is that they're continuously trying to bring programming into the building where they're able to get all kind of cool things happen right in the place that they live. And that's how we got Healthy Paquette. And right. I was able to come in and, and do this program right. is because they wanted to bring something to them to have an understanding about what it is to live a healthy lifestyle and to be able to have a better way of living than what they might have experienced before. Yeah, it's not just about shelter, it's about taking care of yourself. Absolutely, because it's a whole process, right? If you put someone into a certain situation and not really working to help deal with the rest of the things that come with it, it may not be a good situation. So having the whole approach to everything is what really matters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we're going to do some cooking here, but uh, yes. while we get started, uh, Glenda, why don't you tell me a little about your story? My story, I was a homeless veteran uh, living on the streets of Detroit for about a year. Mm -hmm. Then I found uh, the VA hospital and that's where I found from through them, I found Piquette Square, uh -huh. and I've been living there since it opened in 2010. Yeah, 
Yeah. What about you, Michael? Well, uh, homelessness, I found out, comes in different forms. Uh, I didn't have to, uh, uh, by the grace of God, didn't have to live on the street. I lost my job. I lost my home. So from there, I went to a, a, a shelter. Uh -huh. And then from there, I went to uh, Pequette, which is two years now. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what are we cooking? <laughs> well, we have two things. So one part of Healthy Paquette is healthy cooking because mm -hmm. I can talk them to death about what to eat and how to <laughs> exercise and all the other stuff, but food is what really, really matters. 80% mm -hmm. of a healthy lifestyle is all about what you eat. So the two things that we're going to make here today are things that we've done in class, and it is a healthy and voluminous salad as well as crockpot chili. Okay, so wow, we'll start with the salad, and we have a little mixture of things here already cut up, which is some kale, mm -hmm. red cabbage, um, carrots are already in there, and she's gonna go ahead and start that mix with that. But one thing that I stress is greener, the better. Right. Okay, so while it's all cute and nice to have all these fancy colors, your salad needs to be Lettuce. green. Need lettuce or kale yeah, or something like something that. something like that. And we got some baby spinach here as well as a spring mix that she's added into the salad. And so Glenda can mix that up really good. And I always say, if you're making your own food for you to use your hands, <laughs> get into it, wash them first. Right, okay? So right. it's imperative to be clean at all times. And you mix it up really good. And a lot of people will look at this and say, okay, it's just leaves. Like, I don't want to eat this. This is no fun. So here's we what we... need some more ingredients. Yeah, like this is boring. So this is where we add some more fun things. We have raspberries and blueberries, which are really high in antioxidants mm -hmm. and really are good for the skin and, and the teeth. And, and the best part about it is they're fruit, so it makes it taste good, right? right? <laughs> you don't have to focus. Sweet, right? Yeah, but it adds some sweet. Yeah. And then we have um, sunflower seeds as well which people don't really think about the benefits you get from seeds and uh -huh. proteins and things like that. And they also can add a little bit of flavor to it. And if it's something that you like, it's awesome. Yeah. And once you mix it all up, there's two folds to this. People tend to ruin salads with what, Glenda? What do I always say? What do they ruin salads with? Salt. Salt, Salt. what else? Sugar. Speak up, tell them. Salt, sugar. And dressing. dressing. Oh yeah. my God. That puts it, a lot more calories in yes. it. Yes. Put a lot of dressing on it. Right? Absolutely. So if you have a salad and your bowl is still left or your plate is left with a ton of dressing on the plate, that's way too much. <laughs> and you know, all the sugar and fattening things that can come in dressing. So we suggest take a lemon and we don't have it cut up today, but you squeeze, she's doing a good job making it look good. <laughs> that's right. it looks squeeze like the good. lemon over your salad and eat it that way. And if you're a person who's like, I gotta have meat and add something, you can add some baked chicken breast to it or whatever it is that you may like, but try to enjoy the salad just like this yeah. because it's such a big salad. You'll get full, you're getting <laughs> all of the vitamins and nutrients that you need, and you'll find yourself really, really refreshed yeah. if you enjoy yeah. the salad. And, and, the idea, and the idea here, uh, is this is not that expensive to, to have this, this these ingredients in your house and making it yourself obviously cuts some cost out of it too. Exactly, and the biggest thing that we always stress in class is non-expensive yeah. and quick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. That's right. I'm not even a huge like that. go and cook you know a 10-hour yeah. meal. It doesn't take long. You mix all these things together. The most prep might be chopping a couple of things or cutting your lemon in half. Right. <laughs> Other than that, in a couple of minutes, you have a salad, and it's something you can eat in one meal or feed yeah. on for a couple of meals. So, so Glenda, is this a familiar salad to oh, you? Oh yes, <laughs> oh yes, every, yeah. every, uh, almost every day. Yeah. Um, if not every day, it's nutritious and it tastes. Actually, it tastes good. Yeah, I was gonna say, I bet it tastes pretty <laughs> yeah. good too, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. And with the lemon on it, uh, is that is that a good substitute for the dressing? For you? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it it's it, it gives it a lot of flavor. Yeah. A, a lot of flavor, and, and it blends with the fruits and the. It's just good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's perfect. And yeah. if you want to add a, another healthy fat to it, you can use a little bit of olive oil, and that'll make things a lot yeah. easier and kind of give it some flavor. More taste, uh, yeah, sure. and you know, to thicken on there, and it's so much better than using regular dressing. Dressing just kills the salad, and so does cheese. Those <laughs> and, things and, and yeah, well, kill the whole purpose the of the salad. Yeah, all the green exactly. vegetables are more hearty than the regular iceberg lettuce. Uh huh. Uh -huh. and, and and it lasts a little bit longer. Wow. Absolutely, it uh -huh. settles better in the stomach. So yeah. we have this delicious green this salad, salad right? that you can feed on, enjoy, and, and <laughs> have a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
All right, uh, Michael, you are going to make chili for us. Is yes, that I right? Am. Yes. yes. Another one of my favorites. Well, the manager over at Piquet, Caitlin, she likes to call it the set it and forget it. Okay. <laughs> so you set it in the crock pot and then you can just forget about it. And this chili is something that we made last week, actually. Okay. So I thought it would be great to bring. And if you could see, we actually already have the ground turkey. Here, when I say ground turkey, not beef. Right, right. Meat, um, leaner, a leaner meat than yes. uh, ground beef. Absolutely. Right. And we simmered it a little bit on the stove just to brown it up. And here's the cool part with this. So you add the tomato soup. See, I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have known any of this. I have never made chili. Yeah. So <laughs> it's so the simple. Idea that it would be this easy. Is yeah. Really new to me. Watch when you find out. You're going to be like, wow. So you add that. Then you stir it up a little bit and kind of mix and brown it. The cool part about it is then you have some kidney and black beans. Uh -huh. If you're not a fan of kidney and black, you can just go with just kidney or just black, just whatever black. makes right. you happy. Right. You mix that right on in to your bowl. You kind of have whatever it is that you enjoy. Right. One thing I always say about uh, your beans, if you're not cooking them fresh, if you choose to uh, use a can or anything like uh -huh. that, rinse them first okay and the reason you want to rinse them is because there's a lot of sodium and things that come out of the can in the can I right see. and sodium is what causes the high blood pressure and hypertension and all those different things so you want to rinse them off really good right you mix that in and then you add whatever seasoning of choice that you like and because we're all about low salt stuff we use no salt herbs and spices okay. so you can add some herbs and spices you're not using chili powder necessarily. no i mean you can <laughs> add a little chili powder yeah. if you wanted to yeah. but we want to focus on the herbs and spices yeah. first and let yeah. those do its job and some black pepper <clears throat> and also have some cumin okay and oh, wow. yeah, yeah and these herbs and spices once they mix together and do their thing it makes stuff taste it's delicious gonna taste like uh, chili exactly <laughs> and your house will even smell great if right? you mix it all in yeah. and the cool part about this is at some point if you want to add something else you can if you wanted to add more vegetables you could throw in more spinach yeah, if you right. needed to just to make it more hearty yeah. But the cool part is you stir it up and then you put the top on. Just get you a good mix. Yeah. You put the look top on, set it for about three hours, and okay. after that you'll have chili. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, That's you know, add chili. some water to it as you need to to make it as watery right. or let it be as thick as you need. And right. you have a healthy chili that you can feed your whole you know, block yeah, with or right. just enjoy for yourself. So, Michael, you did that uh, like you're a pro. <laughs> this is not the well, first time. <laughs> uh, like she stated, that uh, we did that last week in our yeah. class, and yeah. uh, it was delicious. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Very yeah. good. What's awesome, through the program with DMC, we were able to get funding where all of the participants who have been committed to the program over the last year mm -hmm. were able to get their own crock pot. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, so this Very whole good. series we're doing with the crock pot, they literally bring the crock pots from their apartment. And and we have a new meal every yeah. week, oh, and nice. they just go upstairs and, you know, set and it and forget it. it. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and then they get to eat. And I just thought that was such a cool thing because not only did those people earn their crock pots, yeah. but to be able to, you put know, them to use. yeah, put right. them to use at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, when we talk about healthy eating, I think a lot of people think about calories, and mm -hmm. that's one thing. Yeah. But these two meals also. Uh, eliminate some of the other things you're not supposed to really be loading up on, right? Absolutely, because the calorie focus always comes into play when people think about certain things. And even if I'm keeping my calorie count at a decent level, mm -hmm. but I'm eating a lot of salt, a lot of fat, a lot of sugar, I'm still going to be suffering from those ailments that... You're still at high risk for... Absolutely, uh, for anything. Yeah. And weight has nothing to do with what you're high risk for. It's all about what you put in your body. And what you eat is a result of the outtake of that. And so that's been my main focus the whole time is they always tease me because I say, no salt, no sugar, right? <laughs> leave the sugar alone, leave the salt alone. It's so tempting. I know, it's so tempting. It's so good. They, it, they laugh, they go, we're going to make pork chops one day. I'm like, absolutely not. We're never going to make <laughs> pork chops. That. We're not oh, doing no. it. But um, it's just amazing how you will feel and they'll be able to tell you the progression that we've seen people to make yeah. over this last year have yeah. been amazing. Yeah, I mean, how, how much different does it feel to be eating like this? Um, me personally, I've totally changed my eating habits, my lifestyle. I, I, I've put more green food into my diet and um, we come back at the at the next class and we tell her how we 
progress and what we've done as as far as, and she she quizzes us and yeah. she she <laughs> inquires and she she wants to know yeah. because she needs to know that this program is actually it's working. working. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you guys all for being here. Congratulations. Thank you uh, on uh, your progress and congratulations to you on the program. Yes. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. All right, that's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can get more information about our guests at AmericanBlackJournal.org. And you can always connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. We'll see you next time.